Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Connery from Out of Work. Today we're talking white bass, sand bass. Uh, this is also part of our Fishing Explained 2021 series. We've already gone over stripers, we've already gone over bass. Now we're talking about white bass, which is also a very, very uh, popular option, okay, for fishing because it's very cheap. It's not very expensive. You don't need a lot of expensive rods and reels, things like that. You can have one rod and you just need a couple of baits. We good to go, so stay tuned. All right, guys. When I'm thinking white bass, I'm thinking about just having fun. Okay, there's no tournaments. There's no screaming drags, there, you know, nothing like that. It's a little more on the tame side of things. But at the same time, the white bass is a very, very good panfish. Or some of you might not call it, consider it panfish, but I do. It's it's the fish that doesn't grab, you know, don't, don't grow too big. I mean, a good one's like 14, 15 inches, right? That's a good one. And the equipment's fairly cheap. We're not talking fluorocarbon or anything like that. We're talking, you know, Zepco lines okay so for 300 bucks so for 300 yards you're looking five dollars that, that that type of category okay so uh for white bass this time of year actually you know what reference my striper video as well because this just waters down the striper videos because these fish will school with stripers a lot of times hybrids hybrid stripers as well so but basically the main difference between a white bass and a striper or a hybrid is these guys are all smaller. Their mouths are all smaller. Their mouths are only about that big. So we can't, you know, they're not gonna hit a bait this size. So we're we're downsizing and everything. So there's been there's been a lot of trips where we've been on, you know, just striper fishing and white uh, striper fishing and uh, bass fishing for the tournament trails, and we come across a school of white bass, right? You throw jerk baits in there, and you're catching them, but you're not catching them very good, and you're like, okay, if I was gonna go out on the same day what kind of equipment would I bring? And this is it right here. Okay, so if we're going after white bass and you've already kind of found them, what are we throwing? So white bass are suckers for small spoons and crappie jigs. Small spoons. Let me show you my spoons I'm talking about. These are the spoons. Okay. This is an Acme Castmaster, half ounce. This is this little Stilo. Okay, one eighth to three eighths. These are awesome. They have treble hooks on the back. They might even come with a little bucktail on the back. But you know, for the most part, these are great. And but those are fairly shallow water. If you go, you find them deep. You find them like thirty foot down. You gotta get something like this. This is like a one ounce slap. These are slap spoons. They're just lead with trebles on the hook, treble hooks on the back of them. Like I said, sometimes you know you might want to add a you know a couple of things to. Them. So, spoons. Those are spoons, and those are for either shallow water cast into them or vertical jigging, dropping them straight down and just, mm, got them. things like that. Another one is uh, that's really good. That it's it's a, fan, it's a fan favorite, and it's a crew favorite is a Con Cordell Gay Blade. And this is the bigger one. This is the half ounce. Once again, you could throw. You can throw chuck and wind or you can just drop it right down on too this guy works pretty good too so vertical jiggy as well but i think everybody is going to agree that in the world of crappy fishing no one talks about this guy i mean crappy fishing white bass fishing no one talks about this guy this is a rapala jigging wrap kind of a newer one it's a small one it's only about two inches long two little weird hooks on the side and a treble hook on the bottom I think that'd be killer, man. I've never even tried it, but I'm gonna try this one. You know, like I said, that's vertical jigging, okay? But I think in the world of uh, crappies and everything, I think it's hard to beat these guys. I mean, look at these guys. This one's wet, that's why it looks weird. But marabou jigs. And the sizes 16th, 1 16th to an eighth. And here's a higher end one. This one's above from VMC. As you can see, a lot more marabou on that. But, you know, for the most part, you know, something like this, they're cheap. They're like 
five for two dollars, you know, something like that. So, tell you a couple little tricks, right? Uh, there's a way to fish it. If they're shallow, you just kind of fish it the way they are. If they're deep, you have to get a, a little crappy jig down real deep, right? So, uh, there's a thing called a Carolina rig. You guys gotta look it up, but put a half ounce and then, you know, three feet later, put a crappy jig on it. As you drop it, watch it go down on your 2D and just stop it before it hits the fish. And then you're, so the big weight takes it down, the little, the little crappy jig will follow, then stop the weight and the crappy jig will swing around to the fish, okay? And you wanna keep it at the fish's uh, nose, is how, that, is how it works. So that's one thing you can do. But, like I said, if it's in deep water, it's hard to beat the spoons. The spoons are always, I mean, they nip on the little treble, you got them. Um, but for the most part, it's February, you know. So this is the February edition. We're going to have a lot more to come. Um, so when you're fishing rivers, you're looking for deep holes, and you're looking for current. There are going to be one or the other. So depends on the day. I mean, the fish got to eat. So some days they're going to be in the current. Some days they kind of want to be out of the current. So that's something for you to figure out, you know. But rivers, a lot of times rivers will bend too. And when they bend, there's a deep side and a shallow side. A lot of times, like I said, they're gonna be on the deep side. That's where the current's at, that's where the deep hole's gonna be. But if you get a vortex of water spinning, sometimes it can be on this side. So that's something you gotta figure out every day. Every day is a little bit different. But that's for a river, if you're on the lake, if you're on the lake, for the most part, it's all offshore fishing. Uh, there is an opportunity right at prime time, between two and six, that we'll talk about, but for the most part, they're going to be deep. They're going to be, I would start looking main lake points, creek channel swings, that area, and look for the drop-off. There's usually, like, drop-off right there. That's where you want to start looking and a little bit off to the drop-off. Uh, they'll suspend. For the most part, white bass will suspend during the wintertime. And when you find them, drop your spoon down, drop a crappy jig down. Uh, and more than likely, they're, you're going to get bit. I mean, they're, they're fairly competitive. Uh, fish so they're gonna buy pretty good um, you can keep you know hammering them uh, the other thing is there's also a technique called dead sticking technique look it up dead sticking where you can basically tie a crappy jig okay tie a crappy jig and just drop it to where the fish is at don't move it put the rod in the rod holder and just wait for the rod to bend over it's really really deadly in the winter time for, um, for all these pieces, white bass, hybrids, and stripers. But today we're focusing on white bass, that's why we're using a crappy jig. If you happen to run into a, a big school of white bass, you could do that with a fluke also, like a three or four inch fluke. But for the most part, main leg points with creek, creek channel swings right on them. Uh, that's gonna be the major thing. We don't do too much white bass fishing in the wintertime. All the main lake stuff, we tend to stick to rivers. When it comes to rivers, you're looking for deep holes or current. And don't forget about don't forget about the uh, the dam tailwaters. Okay, dam tailwaters. It's an on and off affair. But when they're there, there's a bunch of them. When they're off, they're all like they're just they're, they disappear. Don't don't don't, don't nobody know where they went. Okay, so basically that's where you want to look for them. Well, and when in terms of uh, when and where, when it comes to when and where, um, there is a morning bite. There's a very very early morning bite that lasts thirty minutes. And then everything kind of shuts off. Everything's going to happen between 2 and 6 in the afternoon. 2 and 6 in the afternoon. If it's a river, pretty much the same thing. If it's a river that's got water generation, where like water goes up and down, then you're going to have to pay attention to that stuff because the water generation schedules of your lake or your dam or when they're pulling water, for that matter, that will have an effect on this, this time, okay? But for the most part, you know, for most of the guys that have very stable water conditions, 2 to 6 in the afternoon. And for the guys that are bank fishermen, 2 to 6 in the afternoon most definitely. Because uh, even though the fish are real deep, right, they have to eat every day. And they will push bait to the shadows every winter day. They will do it. How long does it happen? It might be 15 minutes. It might be a couple hours. But for the most part, you will get your 30 minutes. To, to hit these guys up um, but you like I said you want to be on the steeper banks it'd be nice if you had a real flat point with a real deep drop on one side more than likely they're gonna push bait from the deep 
up the steep bank to the point where you can cast to them. That's probably going to be your best shot. And don't forget, you're not a sissy if you're still using one of these guys. Okay? There is... When, before the channel came into existence, we were catching white bass in the wintertime on bobbers. You, on windblown points, like I said, windblown points, wintertime on crappy jigs. So, we would have this guy literally, you know, two, three feet below. But you guys know how, you guys know how this works, you know? Bobber, crappy jig. Just throw it out there, slow wind it, slow wind it back. And if it's windblown points, you know this bobber's going up and down, and so is this thing. It's going up and down too. And white bass just smoking, you know. So, a couple of other uh, favorites from us. This is the swimming minnow, rigged on a one eighth ounce jig head. Just a generic jig head, nothing special about it. And this is a favorite that was submitted to us. This is the Lake Fork Magic Shad. Looks a little weird, but white bass love it. Oh yeah, but I forgot to mention honorable honorable mention is uh, the guys from DTF out of uh, the Wichita, Kansas area. They recommended this to me. I knew about it before, but I really didn't see it firsthand until these guys were uh, showing video footage of this. And it's this thing's a beast. All you do is throw it out there, it bounce off the bounce off the bottom basically. But that's where you want to go, you know. But the river stuff. It's a lot easier to do than the uh, the main lake stuff because the main lake you gotta have some type of electronics to go and find them, whether they're on humps or they're on side humps or whether they're on the deep channel swings, you have to kind of figure that out. But for the most part, they are suspended, or at least when you go over them, they will come off the ground because they're suspicious of your boat, and then they'll go back down. So and when that happens, usually it's not one or two; it's a whole school. Once you see four, five, six of them come up, more than likely that's white bass. Um, so, yeah, so any questions on that, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer more of that. But for the most part, these fish behave just like stripers, but we're attacking them with much smaller baits, okay? And this whole thing is cheap, okay? So you're talking like $30 Walmart rods, spinning tackle, you got like six pound test line on there. You could up to up it to braided line if you want, but still, it's you don't have to. It's all cheap. It's everything's all cheap. And like I said, time frame, prime time is probably the best time. The night bite does not exist. As far as I know, the night bite does not exist right now. Unless if you're on a hot water discharge lake, then it's actually, it might be fire at night. That's the crazy part of a hot water discharges. And if anybody actually wants to go high end, throw an A-ray. Okay. This is one of the A-Rigs we're building. Um, this is one of the out-of-work, outdoors A-Rigs. It is a very special A-Rig, as you can see. Built out of super, super tough fishing line. And this whole thing is weightless on top of a three-quarter ounce on the bottom. But of course, feel free to decorate however you want. And you'll see in the footage, this thing gets smashed all the time by white bass. While we're trying to catch hybrids. You know, so that thing always works. But like I said, it's a little, it's a little expensive. You're looking like thirty dollars a piece. But actually, fully rigged, you're probably looking more like forty-five, fifty. But what bass? If you want to keep it cheap, this is the fish to keep it cheap. You don't need a fancy boat. You, know, you get a little I cheap job. I got white bass and two hybrids. A little cheap fish Wait. finder on there. Be like a two-dollar no, fish finder. A white bass Something and a that's hybrid. got mapping in 2D so that that's you can two actually fish right now. Uh, find them. And once you find them, you know where they're at. You don't lose track of where you're at. Okay. And if you're fishing rivers, that's even cheaper. Uh, you don't even need a fish finder at that point. Uh, Lake main points. If you're on the bank, that works too. Like I said, time two to six. This time of year, it's it's so cold that fish need time to get the metabolism to, to go up. And once they do, they'll they'll start feeding. And that time frame is right here, two to six. That's my experience. So if you guys have other things you guys like to add to this, oh, one thing. If you haven't noticed, from my experience, these fish like chartreuse. So people say, what is chartreuse? Chartreuse is a color. It's, it's the green color, so green, little bits of green on there. 
Well, green head, green body. Okay. All right. And if you look at my spoon, same thing. Little chartreuse. You know, little chartreuse. And a little bit of chartreuse. If I had to pick one color, it would be chartreuse, okay? I don't know what it is with clear water, winter time, and white bass hybrids and stripers. That's a that's a must-have color for me. So if you had to ask questions about colors, bam, chartreuse. But for some reason, don't go completely chartreuse. Just go t hints of chartreuse. But yeah, that's it, man. Um, wintertime fishing, white bass, sand bass. Um, like the bobber trick, that worked pretty good for a couple years. So never roll the bobber. You're not a sissy if you still use the bobber. You know, it's all fun, fun and games. Um, but yeah, this is February. February is kind of one of those months where it's just like, bro, all the fish are in the deep. You're not going to catch them on the bank. All right, but hey, guess what? March is coming up. This same thing is going to happen in March. Okay, so in March, they're going to school up in very predictable areas. You guys can ca start catching them real good now. Because in February, for you to limit out, I mean, it's almost impossible in Oklahoma. There's no limit on white bass. But say you had a 50 fish limit, right? In, in February, it's impossible for the guys on the bank to do it. The guys on the boat, very possible. But in March, things start, you know, things start warming up. So the bass, the white bass start schooling up. They start wanting to go up the creek channels, you know. So in March, we're going to talk about pre-spawn, where to look for them, what kind of baits, once again. Pretty much like this, okay. Once again, can try to keep it cheap, but we're going to start talking when and where because this and this is going to change for march and in april this definitely definitely changes that definitely definitely changes so you don't want to miss out so sub to the channel give me a thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned anything and uh we'll see you on the next one all right guys once again connery from out of work outdoors we'll see you in a couple weeks hopefully all right guys see you